Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome to Share Talk. I am Bonnie Hughes. Today we are speaking with Katoro Gold. They have gold and nickel projects in Tanzania and a joint venture on a tailings retreatment project in South Africa. And here to tell us all about the company is Louis Kotsia, Chief Executive Officer. Hello, Louis. Good morning, Bonnie. Nice to be speaking again. I noticed that yesterday you raised uh, 1.1 million pounds in an oversubscribed placing. I'm assuming that that money will be used towards your Blyvor project? Yes, uh, it, it, well, it will actually be used towards both of our core projects. Uh, we uh, are looking to use that funding to bring both of these, you know, to advance them uh, uh, with equal enthusiasm and, and commitment. So uh, the, the funding will go to both. We are obviously extremely pleased about the result from this placing. We were significantly oversubscribed which in the, the current conditions and current markets um, is, uh, is something that uh, that uh, you don't see that often. We were, in the, on the one hand, quite surprised to see how quick we, quickly we, we filled the book uh, and how quickly we were actually oversubscribed. That uh, shows quite a bit of confidence uh, in the company and what it's doing. And we certainly looking forward uh, to deliver on the various projects that we're working on at the moment. And so I guess at the moment, your most advanced project is the Blavor project, and you generated a, sc a scoping study. Um, and um, so you are progressing that forward and potentially looking for investors. Can you give us an overview of the scoping study and the progress on potential funding? Well, as we've said in the past, the scoping study was done to, to do basically, there were three uh, focus areas for the, for the scoping study. The first one was to understand what the extent the quality, the quantity of the previous development work is that was done with, uh, at the time that we got involved in the project to understand what we need to go forward. That leads into the second focus area is to understand the exact scope of work that we still have to do until the point where we get into production and understand the timeline for that. And then the third one was obviously most importantly to understand the feasibility of the project from an economic, operational and technical point of view. And as we've announced in the past and as we, as we have indicated, we uh, got some really good results out of this uh, scoping study. Uh, it delivered a very strong positive results on all three of these focus areas. We know exactly that we can move straight into definitive feasibility. We are confident that we can deliver within 18 to 24 months getting into production. And on the uh, feasibility side, on the economic, technical and operational side, we didn't see any flaws as such. Uh, we saw an IRR of uh, around about 25%, and these figures are all before optimization. Uh, a real strong NPV, NPV5 of $131 million. We, uh, also, uh, it also produced a, a, a fairly low or very competitive uh, all-in sustaining cost, around about $700. So all in all, the scoping study gave us a, a very, very positive uh, result. It showed that the project is very robust. And it provided us with a very strong baseline from where we could start to plan further work. As, as far as that is concerned, we're now moving ahead, continue with the, the feasibility work, the development work. We know exactly what we need to do. We know exactly what the timelines are involved. Parallel to that, we also progressed the funding side. And as we have announced previously, we saw a really strong interest. Uh, in, in our last RNS, we indicated 14 different entities who have engaged with us on the funding side. That's moving at pace at the moment. We also, we always have to understand that this funding of a project like this is a process, it's not an event. Be very pleased with the process at the moment, be very pleased with the progress that we're making, and we're even more pleased with the level of interest that we're seeing in this. Now that's all on the Blayfour side. Uh, we are on schedule, we're on target with the work that we want to do, both from a technical and operational point of view, as well as from a funding point of view. Parallel to that, and that is probably the, the most important uh, part of the funding that we've just done, is to get Haneti to fire on all its cylinders as well, to move forward at equal pace to what we're doing on Blayfour. So we are now in a position with a really good funding result that we announced yesterday to also get Haneti at that same level of progression of development. And we will see two really good projects develop alongside each other and moving forward at significant pace. Well, it was a very good opportunity for you to get involved with the Blevoir project. Can you tell us how that occurred? Well, the, it's, it's an opportunity that uh, crossed our path towards the end of last year. 
we had a very careful look at it at that point in time. We were presented with a, a wealth of information and it ticked all the boxes for us from an operational point of view, technical point of view, permitting point of view, a compliance, a regulatory point of view. It just stacked up. Uh, it is a resource of about 1.3 million ounces, average grade of about 0.3. It is permitted. Uh, it is compliant with regard to local uh, requirements. It is ready to go. We need, just need to, to get the, do the development work that takes us from where we are now to get it into production. So it's very rare to come across a project that is so well packaged. And yeah, how shall I put it? It's a, a, a project where, where it's literally ready to, to just take the wrapper off it and enjoy it. And so now you're moving it forward to a bankable feasibility study? Yes, that's what we're busy doing at the moment. We are obviously doing that in parallel with the funding conversation. So the two processes are also interdependent. They are informing each other. So we're, but we are moving forward with that. We will be commencing with the resource upgrade work that we've uh, announced in the past very soon. That's ready. All the planning for that is finished. All the contracting for that has been done already. And we will initiate that uh, very shortly and also other parallel uh, uh, feasibility work is continuing at the same time. I have to stress that the, these are two main work streams, the funding on the one hand, the definitive feasibility on the other hand, and they are advancing in parallel. And what will be the initial capex for uh, building the project? At the moment, we are looking at around about 30 to $35 million, which will be the, the, the initial funding requirement. But these figures are all figures that can change and will most likely change as we negotiate the funding options, as we do the further optimization in terms of the uh, results that we saw out of the scoping study. But that's more or less the ballpark figure that we're looking at at the moment. And would you look at debt and equity or are you looking at all options? Well, the fortunate thing that we have is that we are really in a, in, a, in a good position where we can be very flexible in terms of the financial solution or the funding solution that we develop for this. So we can accommodate either debt or equity or both. Our first choice would obviously be to see how, how much we can fund this or to what extent, how far we can actually fund this in debt before we make use of equity. And would you look at a streaming or a royalty as I've said just now, we are able to look at all funding instruments, all funding solutions, and we are indeed looking at all of those at this point in time. And what, what is really good for us is that the, the entities that we are engaged with in discussion provides or represents all the various funding instruments applicable or appropriate for a project like this. So we are really in a good position that we don't only have a wide variety of funding opportunities, but also a very diverse representation of different funding instruments. Well, the good thing about having, you know, 14 people interested or 14 groups interested is that uh, you have a lot of competition and therefore can probably get much better terms um, on any deal that is done. Exactly right. And that's exactly what we're trying to do at the moment. And that's why I said earlier, it's incumbent on us to make sure that we utilize this opportunity really, really wisely and carefully to make sure that we develop and arrive at the proper and right funding solution for this project. It's, it's not often that you are in a position where you are actually able to, to, to go through a, a selection process, I almost want to say, or, or, or a, a process where you can really carefully select the best of the best uh, to come to a, a proper solution. It's not an easy road. It's not a, a done deal. It's, a, it's, as I said, it's a process. We still got a lot of work to do, but I, I don't think we could have asked for a better uh, position to be in at this stage of the development of the pro project than what we are at the moment. Well, with potential revenue generation of 992 million US, I'm sure that has generated a lot of interest in the project. It has indeed. And do you want to give us an overview of some of your other projects that you're taking forward? The important thing is, as, I, as I've said at, at the start of this, uh, this interview, we, we uh, wanted to get Haneti going as well. Haneti has, uh, has been sort of the, the orphan for a while now, uh, while we were uh, getting Blayfour up and running. Blayfour is up and running. It's, it's gaining in momentum by the day. And we now need to get our other core project uh, up and running as well. And that's Haneti. Haneti is, as far as exploration projects go, is probably one of the most exciting projects I've seen and that I've come across in my, in my life in, in, in the mining industry. And do you have historical data on that project? 
Yeah, yeah, we have. I mean, and we've published uh, a lot of that is in the public domain. We've seen some really good nickel values, uh, PGM values. This is a, this is a true polymetallic uh, opportunity. We are ob obviously focusing on the nickel potential, which we believe is significant. But there's also gold potential here. There's lithium potential. There are PGM. Uh, there's PGM potential. You know, with uh, PGM uh, grades of about 3.8 more than three grams per ton that we've seen in the past. It's a really exciting exploration play. As I've said, we are focusing on the nickel. We've done a lot of work on the nickel in the past so far. As far as early exploration work is going, we've identified three prime uh, drill targets. And what we will try to do now is to see how we can approach these drill targets to continue with the development work of there, get the first drilling campaign going. But in parallel to that, also develop other conversations and discussions that we're having with interested parties that have approached us on the possibility of doing earnings or joint ventures. And again, the funding position where we find ourselves in at the moment really gives us a strong position to advance also, not only the, the Blayfour, but also this project by adding our own value to it, by conducting further exploration work, but also leveraging that in terms of other commercial discussions that we have. And I, may, I must add, the fact that we've completed our transaction with Lake Victoria Gold, uh, we've announced that very recently, that gives us an additional uh, source of revenue. The proceeds from that transaction, transaction is uh, uh, bound to start flowing into the company as well, which puts us, puts us in an even stronger position from a cash runway point of view. And when do you plan to start your drilling campaign on the project? Well, we are now uh, uh, looking at what is going to be the optimal time. We will come back to the market and inform the market on that. We are planning that. We have to take uh, into consideration the seasonality uh, in all the seasons in, in, uh, in Tanzania as well. So we uh, just want to see uh, how much work we can still do this year and what it is that we can do confidently before the raining season sets in. Uh, and, and, and a few other practical considerations. But uh, as I said, we are in full planning mode at the moment to see how we will do this, when we will do it, and how we will execute it. And, and we will obviously update the market on that in due course. And with regard to your gold project that you sold to Lake Victoria Gold, you got a net smelter royalty of 1.5% and also staged considerations of US 1 million. Do you want to give us a bit more of an overview of that? Well, I mean, that's all, all been announced in the past already. There's a $1 million consideration. The, uh, we've completed that transaction. All the conditions precedent have been met. And the payment uh, schedule or the payment uh, structure for that has now come into effect. And we're expecting to, to, to see first payments uh, happen very soon. And, and, and again, there also we will update, update the market as we progress. But that gives us an, an additional source of, of revenue, an additional source of cash uh, that will come into the company that we can apply very effectively towards the, the development of our two core projects. But most importantly, it actually means we have a third project in our portfolio because we are already a shareholder in LVG and we have the option to increase that position in the future. And we have the royalty uh, position, as you correctly mentioned. That project is scheduled to go into production before end of this year. Now, that doesn't mean that our royalty acts or royalty uh, uh, payments will come into play already then, but it means we have access and we are positioned in another uh, project close to production. So all these, you have a lot of near-term uh, revenue generating possibilities, which is a very good place to be for an exploration company. Indeed, definitely. So, and, and that's what we tried to do when we did the, the Lake Victoria transaction. We used that asset to leverage our position in such, in such a way that we can position the company where we can get access to more uh, opportunities. And that's exactly what we did. We, I mean, where we are today, we are really well funded and we have two really strong projects of merit in terms of the Playford Gold project as well as the uh, Blue Sky project. The, early exploration project in the nickel, which, which holds the promise of, of being a, a really world-class deposit should the, the next steps of work, next exploration work we do prove to be positive and give positive results. And then in the background, we have a third project in, in, in the sense of, uh, of Imuero, which, or Reef, which we, set, which we sold off to LVG, which is happening and hopefully will be in production towards the end of this year as well. So investors have a lot of positive news flow to expect from your company um, with regard to the funding um, and potential revenue from the, uh, the sale of your projects. And what else can we expect? There's so much uh, happening at the moment and so much that we are planning for the, for the near future. 
that uh, there's quite a bit to quite a lot to be expected. You know, we um, the Blayfoot project in its own right uh, is, uh, is 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 quite an undertaking, and uh, we are making progress there and hope to to keep on to keep the momentum and increase the momentum that we already have. And then there's of course what we want to do on Aneti. And as I said, on Aneti, we, we have uh, an approach there where we're continuing with development work, our own exploration. There are also other commercial discussions going at the moment, as we've announced in the past. And uh, so out of these two projects, I think there's, there's quite a, an active period ahead for the company with hopefully uh, a lot of positive uh, developments coming our way over the next couple of months. Well, thank you very much, Louis, for joining us. And we look forward to speaking with you again and getting an update on your progress. Thank you very much for having me, Bonnie. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.